This one's gonna be on ZSH. Basically, it's a shell. Um, so you know, there's a lot of distributions, and they always have like maybe different, you know, Windows Manager, Desktop Environment, File Manager, and all this stuff. But usually, they all have the same shell, and that's Bash. I'm not sure if that's a standard or anything, but um, yeah. So what what this is, we're gonna do is use ZSH, and a lot of people like it because they have the um, autocomplete and it sounds kind of stupid but when you use it it's a little bit different um, you actually probably like it even more than bash if you actually try it out okay so anyways let me show you some stuff you can do with here uh, I don't know everything because I'm kind of new to this I'm gonna be using it like two or three weeks but let's see here so you type in like LS and then you know dash and then we We'll tab it and you can see there's a lot of possibilities. We'll put yes. And you can see that they give you um kind of like the bash style, but this one has more you know information of what it does and all that. But if you push tab again, you enter in this um end curse mode. So it's kind of like a menu here. And you can move your what was that your arrow keys, right? And you can see that. I guess it's much better for new users too because you know you don't have to pull out a stupid man page uh, close the man page and then you know enter in the, the commands that you want or the arguments that you want and then the, um, you know you might go back to pull up the man page again which is kind of annoying this one you just go here you can read up on it you can see that there's a uh, the short way to do it or the long way to do it and you can see that the information is here and you can read up on it real quick, right? And then you push enter and then you can fill out that option if you want. And yeah, you can do this with a lot of other commands, not just you know the LS. I think you have to set it up though. I'm not exactly sure. Like I said, I'm new to this. But like say for example, aptitude, uh space and then tab. And you can do this for this command also. And you can see we can go in here and it's much quicker than pulling out a stupid man page uh, or it's also maybe refresh your memory of what uh, you know you forgot or maybe you don't know something in here that you've never seen before so it's a good way to discover stuff also right and yeah you can do this with all a lot of other commands um, and what else is out there oh yeah this is kinda stupid but maybe it's useful I'm not sure so let's say you have different folders like this one has capital P, capital P, and capital P. Uh, so this is like a short way to change directories. So you change directories, and you say capital P slash. And I know the second folder is games, Linux, and then what's that? Hexahop, right? And then you push tab, it'll fill up all the whole thing. Push enter, and you're into that folder. Kind of useful, but not really. So that's another one. Um, oh yeah, for example, there's a lot of people that use top or H top or whatever. Uh, with this one, you can go kill, and then to say per space, and you can see that you have a list of your process. I think this is user process, but you can see that you can kill it if you want. Let's say for example, my transmission uh, here. Push enter, and you see it fills in the process ID. Now if I push enter again, it'll kill it, which I don't want it to do. Uh, you see that you can do this with uh, or it's a little bit different you know the autocomplete with different commands um, that you can you know make it work with uh, but really what I use it for alright is for my own aliases so I talked about Sopcast uh, last time and you can see that I can go tab and I have the menu here and I don't have to f you know type in again I just use my arrow keys and find the, the stream that I want to watch or whatever and it's much more convenient for me instead of like making a menu for each um, you know thing that I have uh, this is it's actually much quicker for me and that's the main reason why I like it alright so that's that uh, in those interactive uh, menu now the thing is when you use ZSH or if you're new to ZSH uh, like I am I'll probably recommend you download this um, they call it a framework but basically it's just the way they um, organize it and they do have some good plugins 
not all of them are that great but uh, to install it okay you just either use the automatic way or the manual way alright and you install it it's not that hard just copy paste bullshit <clears throat> and to activate the plugins um, you know you just edit your ZSHRC file which uh, they have some plugins in here alright so for example if you want to see their list of plugins so this is kinda like a repositories of all the plugins they have now don't try to enable all of them because some of them are different uh, distributions or you know different uh, OS altogether like uh, there's Arch Linux ones and there's some what was it brew for Mac I believe and what else is there well it's uh, OS X if I guess you're using a Mac um, so yeah different you know desktop I mean different distros and different uh, programs in here um, so all you gotta do is remember the name of it and you can go and activate it okay so these are the plugins and these are user created plugins some of them are not really that useful like I, I don't know why they, they have some of them that just have aliases um, which is kinda pointless to me I can make my own aliases but you know you get some of that but don't try to enable uh, you know all the plugins because you're not gonna use all of them and it's gonna take a, a long time to load it so you know the point of this is not to load every uh, plugin in here is to load the only the ones that you're gonna use alright so that's the reason why I like it because it's kinda like modular you can choose the ones that you want to use and the other ones you don't have to um, so if you ever need to enable the plugin you just go use whatever editor you want but I'm gonna use Vim and then I'm gonna use I'm gonna go edit the ZSHRC file it's kinda like your bash RC file but this is ZSH alright and down here where it says plugins right um, all you gotta do is type in the names of it like say I have this extract code which is from here right the extract code uh, and you can use it for all the other ones and I think they close it off with the ending uh, parentheses here right so that's all you gotta do if you want to enable a plugin and like I said don't try to you know enable all of them because that's not the goal of of that and as far as the themes they do have themes so let me open the themes here uh... in the themes here they only give you you know the configurations for it like w what it'll look like but the themes are basically your prompts um, you know that you have but they don't give you a picture so what you can do they have a wiki page down here uh, look here are the current themes and you can see that they give you a picture it's much more you know you can see what the hell it looks like so you can see that this one prompt it looks like this it has this color whatever it is but all you gotta do is remember the name like this one you know Aussie geek or something you copy this and just go back into our ZSHRC file and all you gotta do is just you know type in the name that you want to use for your prompt and they give you you know the screenshots here uh, so that's that that's all you gotta do um, let's see what other ones I'm gonna talk about they do have this custom folder this is for your own thing and the custom folder is basically where you would you know or you know where you would put your own um, like your own plugins or your own aliases in here and the good thing about this custom folder is that when you update your oh my ZSH uh, it will not try to overwrite your custom stuff uh, as opposed to the other ones like your plugin folder or whatever those things will be updated and overwrite it and all that um, so that's really all you gotta know in here now if you wanna update let me show you where they have the commands to update they have a cheat sheet here so you, right here it says uh, upgrade or your ZSH your oh my ZSH so all you gotta do is type in upgrade and you can see that there's oh my ZSH upgrade that and it should try to sync it if there's anything new then I'll you know update it um, so that's really all you gotta do if you wanna use this um, 
framework so that's pretty much it for that um, oh yeah there's another thing if you want to install what is that install if you want to install ZSH you install this one right this is your shell and you should also ins install this one it says uh, CSH dash lovers uh, basically they give you like a tricks and tips examples and all that so if you want to learn more about ZSH then you can type in man dot man and then ZSH dash lovers and they give you a better examples than the default one right uh, and they can you know maybe use it I haven't read all of this yet so I don't really know much about it but I'll probably do some more videos later on but anyways ZSH you should try it out just to see if you like it because really you know bash by default now that that I uh, look back on it I'm saying what the hell dude there should be, be uh, there should be more distribution that uses um, ZSH because I think it's better okay anyways that's it for this one